All right. Hey, we're in person. Look at your person. This, yeah, we ha you know we haven't done a virtual uh, conference. We were spared that, and uh, we want to thank our sponsors, of course, for um, giving us the opportunity to have our 26th annual multicultural marketing conference. Remember, 26 years. Wow. Whoa. Huh. I wish I would have known that, man. I would have gotten ready for this. But uh, it's, it's really been a thrill uh, doing it because um, for some reason, we've been the only game in town uh, doing these conferences. And uh, I, I really want to thank all our sponsors through the years. But more than that, I want to thank you, the marketers. That's what kept our conferences going. We have, uh, we've had a lot of different uh, opportunities to meet with various marketers. Uh, our, our first many years, five or ten years, was mostly corporations. And uh, uh, as they got more organized, we started reaching into some nonprofit groups and, and some uh, real estate, the real estate industry, which is uh, promoting multicultural outreach. So it's really been, um, it's really been an amazing journey. And uh, we're still at it. Uh, June 9th, we'll be here for our uh, 26th annual Hispanic Marketing Conference right back here. And then uh, in the fall, uh, September uh, 22nd, we're going to be celebrating the, uh, the 20th year of La Familia. La Familia, our uh, Hispanic Heritage Award. So again, thank you. And um, uh, some of our sponsors here, of course, we want to thank um, uh, NAREP. Did I say it right? Yeah, well, no, it's challenging, man. You gotta be tricky. I don't say that, don't pronounce that name wrong now. I mean, this is an up and coming organization, now rep. Can we all say it together here? What, now three, on three. Don't rush it, Rico, don't rush it, Rico. Don't rush it, okay? Very slowly, because we gotta practice this. On, okay, one, two, three, now rep. Was it good? Okay, don't change it now on us. Don't have a committee meeting and change that. And we want to thank, of course, U.S. Bank. Now, U.S. Bank's been a sponsor of ours uh, uh, 22 years, if you can imagine. They were one of our first sponsors. And um, I had the pleasure, after three years, uh, uh, our first three years together, of finding them a, a agency of record. So they actually went out and found an Hispanic marketing agency. So they were in it for the long run, obviously. They've been sponsors of ours all these years. Uh, we want to thank um, Think Now, our guests from Los Angeles. Um, we've been very fortunate, and I think for many of you that have attended our conferences, of bringing some of the leading agencies, uh, individuals, organizations, multicultural marketing agencies uh, right here to the city instead of having to travel. The same names you would get if you went to Miami or New York, we've been able to get them here uh, so that you have the opportunity to meet them. And, and um, of course, they bring so many insights and strategies. Is that a not rep call? It has to be a not rep call. OK. And, um, and so uh, with that said, we're very fortunate to get Think Now, who is uh, one of the leading multicultural research agencies in the country. You know, a lot of times we don't talk about the marketing research. Uh, people like the agencies, it's the glamour, it's all the, the ads and everything. But before the ads came, of course, the research, the important part of what those ads should say and what they should be consist of and how does the message get generated and all that thing. So it's really important to have think now. And then um, a couple of other uh, group, a multicultural agents, Consul, Andy Noble and his, and his group is effort to um, bring a more multicultural recruitment to the real estate industry. And then um, our, our keynote and our, our presenting sponsor really is Comcast. Um, they've been with us for uh, eight years and they have a, a great variety of programs we're gonna see right now um, that uh, I was, uh, Aguilar Productions was able to get involved with them. And I really believe in their programming with the Internet Essentials and uh, all these uh, various uh, programs they have to 
to help the, um, the uh, lower income families and seniors and veterans and have uh, access to the internet. It's really important for, for what we do together. And uh, so we're gonna have a little, uh, a, a quick video on what their programs consist of. What was really important to me when I started my own business was I really wanted to set an example for my children that it was possible to be a business owner. I'm Melissa with The Greenery Minneapolis, and we are a plant shop in Mercantile. I'm incredibly grateful to be a RISE recipient. The grant has allowed us to bulk up our inventory and to be able to continue to move forward. Right now, the students are here a lot longer part of the day since they're not in school. The lift zone is provided by Comcast. Comcast generously donated broadband internet and 30 laptops so that there was stable connection for all the students here. The lift zone is a fantastic place for the kids to go to be safe. They've got distance learning help. We are just really, really. It's so important to support small businesses, especially owned by people of color, because it allows the generations that are coming next to see that this space is available to them. I'm Lucien, and I'm the owner of Revival Training. I'm honored to be selected as a Comcast RISE recipient. The visibility, the marketing that have come with this grant has really been phenomenal and are gonna absolutely take my business to the next level. A lot of people with textured hair like my own, we don't have enough people that can help us with the type of products that we use. So I felt like this was my calling to start my own beauty supply. I'm Henrietta Smaller, and I'm the owner of Stunning Beauty Supply. I'm excited and I'm looking forward to help better my business as a Comcast RISE recipient. It's going to help me to reach more customers and hopefully be able to expand in the near future. I'm Melissa with The Greenery Minneapolis. I'm Henrietta Smaller and I'm the owner of Stunning Beauty Supply. I'm Lucien and I'm the owner of Revival Training. We began at the beginning of the pandemic, and so just as I was starting to get the ball rolling with my business and opening at Midtown Global Market, we almost immediately were shut down. It was pretty discouraging. My business was impacted by COVID-19. It drastically slowed down, and I had to just come up with some new ideas and new services that I could offer to the customers. We really had to improvise and, and do things differently and figure out how we could meet people where they were at. Because as we know, during COVID-19, keeping your health and wellness at optimized levels was very important for myself and my clients. I'm incredibly grateful to be a RISE recipient. It came at exactly the right time. I was needing the buffer income to be able to execute my vision. And the grant has allowed us the capabilities to bulk up our inventory and to be able to catch up on some of the things that we might have gotten behind on. It's going to help me to reach more customers and also with coaching to help me grow in a positive way that I haven't been able to. It's so important to support small businesses, especially owned by people of color, because it allows the generations that are coming next to see that this space is available to them. Representation is key. And so seeing people that are doing and walking as those professions or in those roles is really important to our community. Comcast Rise came at the most valuable time now that COVID has kind of settled a little bit, the online presence is still of importance, but the visibility, the marketing, and then also a network and tools to work within that network that have come with this grant has really been phenomenal and are gonna absolutely take my business to the next level. Get fast, reliable internet for any budget. Now qualifying customers can get Xfinity internet free through the Affordable Connectivity Program. That's right, free high-speed internet from Xfinity. And Internet Essentials customers can get equipment included at no extra cost. Get started today. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Comcast. And uh, we have uh, Jose Melendez from Comcast here. ERG, Jose. Yeah. 
Well, we're going to start the program now. Again, uh, featuring Think Now. They uh, had a very interesting report uh, that examined the economic highs and lows of the past 12 months, uh, 2021, and how multicultural consumers have weathered the storm. And to present that, uh, we have Carlos Yanez. Carlos has 20 years of experience designing and executing market research studies among multicultural audiences with an emphasis on Hispanics. He has spent his entire career on the provider side, working for several research companies, including Garcia Research Associates, Knowledge Networks, and GFK. He has managed tactical and strategic research projects for a variety of commercial and government clients, including CDC, GM, Honda, Facebook, Sigma, and many others. Carlos currently heads up the custom research department for Think Now. And um, you know, being from Southern California, uh, he was waiting for me to pick him up at the airport yesterday out in that cold. When I saw him, baby was, you know with the shoulders, you know. <laughs> but we love he survived, right? Carlos Giannis. So this is actually um, the first conference that I've been in in a very long time. And the first time that I've been on an airplane, uh, probably in the last two and a half years. And so this is a, kind of a big deal for me. And it's... it's, it's <laughs> And we're in the uh, Southern California area, so we're, we've been a little bit slower to get kind of back to normal. Uh, but it's really nice to see people's faces um, and to be away from the office. So this is a really welcome change for me. So thank you for having me. So I think I'm gonna, gonna do it this way, if that's okay with you. Hopefully yeah. I'm not in, in anybody's uh, space. Um, so first of all, thank you, Rick. Uh, you've been um, an exceptional host, so thank you very, very much. Um, so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be walking you through the results of what we call Think Now Pulse. So this is a consumer sentiment research study, and it's something that we've been doing now since 2015. So what we do is we survey American adults usually during the latter part of each year. We've been doing that since 2015. So we've been able to track consumer sentiment since then. Um, and as you might imagine, 2020 was a very difficult year. And so you'll, you'll see that the research really points to that. So just to give you a little bit of a, of a background. So this is a quantitative survey. So it's an online survey that we fielded in December of 2021. So that's the most recent one. Um, the base size is 1500. So we do research non-Hispanic whites, Hispanics, African Americans, and also Asians. We focus on 18 to 64. And this of course is a nationwide survey. All right, so basically what, what we're gonna see is that 2020 was, as we all know, it was an exceptionally difficult year for American adults. And what we saw through this research is um, people saying that their personal finances worsened, their perception of the US economy was also dim, but their outlook for 2021 was really just as pessimistic. So there was a lot of uh, skepticism, a lot of uncertainty about what was coming up in 2021. Okay, so the first chart that we're looking at here, um, household income change in the past year. So think of this, we, we asked this in December and we are referring to the previous year. So meaning from January up until December. So did your household income improve? Did it stay the same or did it decrease? And you'll see, obviously, a very, very big difference for 2020, right? Where people were saying that their household income had decreased considerably. Um, and on the opposite side, those that say that it was increasing went down. So there were more people saying that it decreased than people who were saying that it had increased. Um, 
but things look a lot more positive for 2021. So those numbers are actually higher than what we've seen in previous years. So as I had mentioned, it seems as though what we have experienced during the past two years, there is a, a new hope and more so than we've seen in previous years. Now, one of the things that we do as a multicultural research company is we look at specific segments, so Hispanics, African Americans, Asians, and those up arrows means that that is a statistically significant difference. So what that means is those uh, folks who say that their household income improved was significantly higher, and that's true for every single segment. So for non-Hispanic whites, Hispanics, African Americans, Asians, and there's a significant decrease in those who say that their finances worsened during the past year. So those down arrows, that is a very positive thing. Now, what is your outlook for the upcoming year? So what is your outlook for 2022? And you'll see for the year 2020 is when we saw a dip in those who were optimistic about their outlook for the new year. And there was an increase in those who were being pessimistic. But now we see a bounce back. So we see those numbers are significantly higher for this last survey. And that level that you see there is actually the highest optimistic level that we've seen throughout our uh, survey since 2015. And then the percentage who say that it has worsened has actually decreased to the lowest level that we've seen thus far. Carlos, could yes. you like, re-identify your sample and size and how and who these people are? Of course. To bring a little clarification to that. Sure, yeah. I know that I, I sort of ran through that really quickly. So this is a, a nationwide survey, and we're very careful to make it as representative as we possibly can. So we don't just send a survey out and take the first 1,500 people. That's not a true survey. That's not true research. So we set quotas to make sure that we have a representative sample. So what does that mean? So what that means is um, we look at the sample and we quote it by race and ethnic background. So about 60% are white, about 20% are Hispanic. African Americans are about 13%, Asians are about six. But we also look at other uh, variables, such as age group, such as uh, gender, household income, US region. And so we were very, very conscious of that, is that we, we have to make this as representative as we possibly can. So we're always mindful of those different things. Uh, the, the base sizes that you see down here, which I know are kind of blurry, are not accurate. Um, so our base sizes are 500 for Hispanics. And the reason why we do 500 is because clients always want to know what is the difference between a Spanish dominant and an English dominant. So with the larger base size, we are able to do that. So we can break it out by those different groups. Um, let's see, so 1500 national survey, we're focusing on 18 to 64. Um, the reason why we didn't go beyond that is because most of the work that we do really focuses on the 18 to 64 uh, category. And as I mentioned, this was fielded in December of 2021. Thank you. Okay, of course. So this is their, uh, their financial outlook for the next year. So we've already talked about that, but we break it out by the different race and ethnic groups. Um, again, we see a lot of up arrows, which is a, a very good thing. So uh, those who say that it's better than it was, or that it will be better than it was last year, significantly higher for everybody, so for the total market, but we see a significant difference for Hispanics. You see that 56% for non-Hispanic whites. Blacks, actually, there was a slight dip. It's, it's not a significant one, uh, but that is the, the one group that felt um, that were the least likely to say that their finances will be better in this new year. And then Asians also went up uh, 50%. All right, so we, the previous couple of slides, we were looking at perceptions about their own personal finances. So what about the US economy and how is that looking, right? 
So here, uh, we definitely see an upward trend, um, which is one of, the, you know, one of the things that you uh, pointed out, which seems kind of odd, given the numbers that we're actually seeing. Mm -hmm. But this is the perception that people have, largely driven by the fact that we're getting back to some level of normalcy. Um, so you'll see those that are the most optimistic, I mean, that's the highest level that we've seen since, since, uh, since the survey first started in 2015. 2020 was, of course, a very volatile year, uh, so you do see some of the more negative numbers uh, bouncing up. Uh, but then, um, in the most recent survey, those who feel that the economy will be worse than it was last year has decreased. Um, and you will see that that's actually driven, if you look at the table on the right-hand side, you'll see that that optimism is actually driven by non-Hispanic whites. So that's a significant difference. The 48% uh, percent is 13 percentage points higher than our survey from last year. Um, you see some lift for Hispanics. That's a, a point, I mean, I'm sorry, a, a plus five percentage points. Um, African Americans about the same level, and then Asians are a plus four. So interestingly, this really is driven by non-Hispanic whites. Okay, so the previous slides was basically like an executive summary. Um, so here the, the charts are a little bit more detailed. Um, so this is household income. And they basically had a choice of saying that their household income has improved compared to this time last year. It stayed the same or it's actually worsened. Um, so those that say that it improved, so that's the highest level that we've seen thus far. And in terms of those who say worsened, you saw a big spike up in the year 2020. That's the highest that we've seen at any point. And that's now dropped to 15%. So that's the lowest level that we've seen since 2015. Excuse me. Yes. So is that, so is that adjusting for inflation? Is that where the, where the increase is? Or is it just a true increase where people are really making more money? Because I mean. This is, this is OK, this is a survey. Right, so this is not based on like economic numbers. This is based on what people are telling us, right? So in some cases, it's more of a perception. In other cases, it might be, oops, sorry. Do I really need this? <laughs> in other cases, in other cases, uh, um, I lost my train of thought. Um, yeah, in some cases, it's fact. In some cases, it's more of a perception, okay? Yes. Have you tried matching your survey results against the household uh, survey that's done by the Department of Labor? I know we, we've done that in past years. I don't think we've done that in the last couple of years. Um, so I, I can't say that we've done that lately, but we did do it um, in the beginning. But it's not anything that we've done recently. Okay. And now we're looking at the key segments. Um, so you'll see that those who say that it actually has gone up, the most likely are non-Hispanic whites as well as blacks. Um, and those up arrows, as I had mentioned, means that that is a statistically significant difference compared to last year's <coughs> survey. And then those who say that their household income has worsened, you, you see all those down arrows, meaning that that is significantly lower than what we saw last year. So this is a, a very interesting one. So we asked a question about themselves and other members of their household. So have you or any other members of your household experienced a job loss, had your salary cut, um, had your hours cut, or none of these? And we, ac we actually saw, and this is actually points to something that I think really is happening, right? Which People are still not having, I mean, people are still having a hard time finding jobs. Um, they're still um, losing their jobs. Their salary is being cut. Um, and that's being shown here. So this actually is, is different than the perception that we've been seeing in some of the previous slides. So this is more like things that have actually happened. Um, those who say none of these, you will see that, that, these, that the last couple of surveys, these levels have been less than what we've seen in previous years. And less means that it's happening more. Um, but there is a significant difference between this year and, and, and last year. So 37, 
uh, percent last year said that none of these things have happened, but that's now up to 43% this year. So it is trending back up. Then I think we break it up by race and ethnicity. Um, and one thing that we have seen is that for Hispanics, they seem to be impacted the most, um, and certainly this in this most recent survey. So you'll see that they are the most likely um, to have lost a job, either themselves or somebody in their household. They're the most likely to have had their salary cut, their, their hours cut. Asians on the opposite end um, are the least likely to experience any of these job um, impact. personal outlook for 2022 given the political climate. So this, this question is slightly <coughs> different in that we throw in the political climate. Um, and we actually threw that in, I don't think we, yeah, it's in 2017. Um, so people are actually feeling um, more optimistic <coughs> lately. Um, so you'll see that absolutely is, is trending up um, and it's the highest level that we've seen thus Far. So when it comes to um, their, their outlook, given the politics, uh, they're much more optimistic now than they, than they have, than they previously had. Looking at it by race and ethnicity, pretty consistent among all four segments. Um, and those up arrows means that there's a lot more optimism on a significant level versus the, the survey that we did last year. Outlook for their household finances. Um, so I think this is something that we had previously seen. So um, they definitely are more optimistic now. Um, and that is one of the higher levels that we've seen since 2015. Worse than previous years, you'll see that big spike up during 2020, but that's back down again to, to 7%. Here we're looking at that same metric broken up by the four different segments. Um, so the most optimistic group are Hispanics, um, and that is the highest level that we've seen thus far for this group. So that uh, up arrow means a significant difference. And the, uh, the other three groups are relatively similar. The US economy. So I think this is one of the charts that we had previously seen. So those who say that it is growing rapidly or growing slowly, um, it's been around 50% for the most part, but you see a, a big uh, drop in 2020 that was only 38%, but it's right back up to 60%. So that's the highest level that we've seen thus far. And of course, on the opposite end, um, a, a, a significantly lower uh, um, share saying that we are in a recession or in a depression at 15%. So the perceptions of the current state of the U.S. economy, um, again, um, very negative numbers for, for 2020, but that has completely bounced back up. And in fact, we are seeing higher levels than we had seen previously. And then looking at that same metric by our four key segments. So you'll see the most optimistic um, are the non-Hispanic whites. The most pessimistic um, are, are Asian. So I'm actually looking at the, at the very first one. So those that say that it's growing, uh, what is it, rapidly? Yeah, rapidly. Rapidly, it's kind of, yeah, the number, the text is a little fuzzy, um, but yeah. Outlook for, US, uh, for the U.S. economy in, in 2022, again, very optimistic. Uh, that's the highest level that we've seen so, so far. But even in, in, the, our, in our last survey uh, in 2020, people were still thinking positively towards that. Um, and it's just kept, kept going up. Um, okay. 
So looking at this by race and ethnic background, again, uh, non-Hispanic whites, that's actually significantly higher than we saw last year. But Asians are also being very optimistic um, when it comes to the, to the U.S. economy. This one is very interesting. Um, and this is a metric that actually tends to be very volatile. Um, it, it really is based on when you're asked this particular question. If we were to ask this question now, I think the presidential numbers currently are probably significantly lower than what you see here. So this was in uh, December, towards the, probably like the last two weeks in December, I think is when we, is when we fielded this. Uh, but very positive numbers, but as I mentioned, um, if we were to do this a second time, that's probably trending downwards. Mm -hmm. And those numbers for uh, uh, Donald Trump were actually very similar to other research uh, that was out there, whether it be from Pew or from other polling companies. It was generally around those, those same levels. The Biden numbers, is, that's actually much higher than I, than I would have thought. Uh, but as I mentioned, you know, the, this, this data is based on a representative sample, right? So we're not like skewing more democratic, we're not skewing more liberal. Uh, this is a pretty representative sample. It's just at that particular time, those numbers were actually quite, quite positive. Looking at that by different segments. Um, so those who approve of the president of course, this was in uh, December of, of last year, so blacks um, had the highest approval level um, and whites were the, w were the lowest. And of course, the disapproval highest among, among whites. And that basically concludes it. I mean, there's some demographics of the, of the sample that you just saw, but um, so any, any other questions, any, any thoughts, anything that, yes? You alluded to it earlier about, about uh, the current approval rate of the current president. How do you think that's going to translate just if you look back on 2022 in December for the next survey? Do you see it flipping again? I mean, what are your, what's your projection? Do you just understand how you pull your data? Do you see a change? Do you still see a continuing spike in, in optimism? Or do you see that dropping again? I think what's going to happen, and one thing that I had mentioned is that there's, there's, there's perception and then there's fact, right? Yeah. And I do think that at some point that optimism is probably going to start fading a little bit as things become more normal um, and, and when we realize that we're still in a very sort of difficult place and that the you know, economy just isn't quite back yet. And so I, I think that as we transition from the pandemic into more ordinary day-to-day -day -day life is when people's perception will probably start to shift. And it's like, wait a minute, the pandemic's over, things are opening back up, but why am I still struggling? Why, <laughs> why am I, have I been using this? I don't even know. <laughs> so I, I, I do think that when we feel this next year, you will probably see numbers dip. Not, not significantly, but probably slightly. I think you were first. I'll okay. Um, interesting thing. I'm a Chicano artist with a very limited market. But the, uh, the interesting thing is that COVID actually boosted my sales. Mm. And uh, what Wow. Yes, wow, it's correct. <laughs> the other thing is I began to realize what was going on is that Latino entrepreneurs actually did the, the counterintuitive and said, oh, if things are bad, now's the time to go and attack. Mm -hmm. And so we yeah. see the increase of Latino ventures being yeah. all out of whack. I mean, these, these Latinos have got to be not starting a new business yeah. in this climate. Mm -hmm. But because they generally employ extended family members, mm -hmm. that I think is where the optimism is coming up. So regardless of what political parties say, the Latinos are going like, this is our time, cabrón. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to take over. <laughs> uh, and I'm seeing also increased migration. And it's not the migration of the person who wants to come and be a janitor. 
it's the middle manager through corporations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think, um, and I, I was looking, because you're, you're not sampling under 18, but that population demographic is all out of whack beyond what people are aware of. In Minnesota, yeah. you can have a community that perceives itself to be predominantly white, whereas if you go into the elementary school, it's Latino. Mm -hmm. And that is the foreboding, which, you know, thankfully we have intelligent leadership in our corporations. Target pretty much has said to its marketing people, it's the 14-year-old Latina that decides what's on our shelves for the next 20 years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what's interesting here is that the optimism, I'm surprised that Latinos are saying more optimistic, but then of course we're affecting this culture. Yeah, and one thing that I can tell you from doing a lot of different research studies, it doesn't even matter what the, what the category it is. I mean, we may be talking about cereal. Hispanics and blacks, without question, are the most optimistic. Even though they are the most likely to experience hardship, they're simply more positive than everybody else. And I would probably put blacks first. Um, on the opposite of end, of course, are um, uh, Asians. So Asians are always, you know, they have the, house, the, the highest household income. Um, they do the best. They're the most likely to own their own business. But they're the most pessimistic. Um, and, and I think a, a, a lot of that is really just relative, right? It's kind of what your expectations are. And if you're not meeting them, then it's very disappointing. You're, you're not succeeding the way that you should. Um, and with these other groups that are just less likely to experience that success level, um, they're just more optimistic. Um, they're more hopeful. They, they're more likely to believe in the American dream. Um, and one of the more interesting things is that when you look at the Hispanic market, it's the foreign born that really come here with that dream, with that hope, because they, they, they hear about how wonderful it is to live here, uh, the, you know, the advantages that people have, the opportunities that, that people have. So when people come here from outside, they're extremely hopeful. Um, and when you've been here longer is when that, that hope sort of starts to fade, kind of dissipates. Um, but yeah, without question, the, those two segments are the most optimistic. It doesn't matter what you're asking about. Uh, it's very, very consistent. Okay. Oh, one more. So, <laughs> just curious. When you, uh, I've never lived through whatever that was, pandemic, <laughs> economic lockdown, uh, whatever that is that we just went through, and, and it's, it's threatening again, I must say. I, you know, um, we may, may or may not be all done with that. Yeah. Um, from a research standpoint, is there any other event historical event that you can look back to and say, you know, this is similar. I mean, is, wasn't it a complete anomaly for us to go through that, similar to maybe, I don't know, wartime or, you know, what compares to that of what we've been through as, yeah. a, as a people? Literally, literally nothing. Yeah. No, nothing. I mean, the, the first thing that comes to, to mind are obviously events that have affected us all, which of course are the, uh, you know, the war, um, the Spanish flu. Yeah, but that's, I mean, that's, that's really going back. So, but like anything within the last 20 years, um, I can't really point to anything. <laughs> well, possibly, possibly. Drill, drill, baby, drill. <laughs> We didn't shut down the economy. No. 9-11 shut down the economy. Well, 9-11 was, yeah, yeah, you're right, Jonathan. 9 yeah. but, but this is, this is really the, the, the first time where everybody's lives were literally affected on a day-by-day -day basis. So there, there might be things that are going on out there, but it's not really affecting you in your daily life. This affected us all. I mean, we were all in shutdown. We were all in our homes. This was completely different than anything else that we've ever gone through. So this is, without question, very, very different, and certainly anything different since I've, since I've been here. Um, so yeah, it's, there's just nothing like it. Yeah, well, what, what? Uh, going forward, um, yeah. going forward uh, 
as the below 18, which you have not sampled, come into your sampling block, um, could we be looking at people who don't make those distinctions? They weren't around during 9-11, yeah. and they grew up inside um, COVID. And so their perception, if they yeah. are culturally mm -hmm. predisposed to be optimistic, yeah. it's not going to affect them. And so we could see a change in leadership and entrepreneurialism, which is the key to our society. It's all those Latinos yeah. who are yeah. 18 now going like, okay, I'm not going to get a job somewhere, but I have to go out and start a business. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that that might be what's going to drive the future of our economy. Contrary to what yeah. all the naysayers, and I live with a bunch of old people. Well, that'll be the next study, right, Carlos? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll study that next time. Yeah. That'll be, that'll be coming uh, part of your, be soon. your schedule. Be soon. With that, how about a big hand for Carlos? Um, <laughs>